Hey traders, this video is on how to find the targets. Now this is an updated uh, video. Uh, I did this video nine years ago and put it up on YouTube and since then it's at 110,000 views. So it's obviously a video that uh, you as traders want to see and uh, since uh, nine years ago a lot has happened in the market. Uh, we did that nine years ago. The market was, it trended more than it does now. Now the market is basically sideways and uh, just ranges, all right? But uh, the most important thing to understand is that the big boys leave tracks and they leave tracks in the charts. Now, retail traders can't see these tracks in conventional retail charts, all right? And not seeing them causes retail traders to lose trades. Ergo, they lose money. Now, Proact Traders charts reveal when the big boys are injecting dollars into the asset, how many times the big boys are putting it in and taking out funds, when the big boys are quiet, and what short and long term levels are the big boys most probable targets. You're going to see as we go through the charts some very interesting things that you won't have on your charts. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't trade with other charts. You certainly can. But uh, the, the real deal is that we're trying to find an edge in the marketplace. The edge helps us traders that are, uh, you know, got small accounts. Big boys have unlimited funds so they can live through any pullbacks. You can't. So it's really, really critical that a retail trader narrows it down and gets the correct information from the charts that the big boys are doing today. So when you're looking for targets, the first thing you have to do is have a strategy or a plan to gather the information. And the first place you start is the dollar index. Now, if you're on uh, MT4 trading view and you don't have a dollar index, you're going to need to find one. All right. There are lots of them online. You can just uh, go find one and then, uh, you know, uh, bookmark it and look at it. <clears throat> By the way, you should be looking at the dollar index anywhere from 8, 10, 12, 15 times per trading session. And the reason for that is that the dollar index affects 88% of all currencies in the market. And therefore, except for 12%, uh, everything is affected by it. If it's going up, certain currencies go down, certain currencies go with it. That's called correlation and you need to memorize correlation. All right. So let me pull that up for you so you can see it. So this is a uh, little graphic that shows the dollar index correlations. Now, the fact that it says with doesn't mean 100%. It just means it typically goes with it. So the EG, the EA, the GA, and the Euro New Zealand typically go with it, but not 100%. Now, the pound New Zealand and the pound uh, Swissy, half the time they go with the dollar index. So in other words, if the dollar is going up, then they go up. But the other half, they don't. So these are a little bit uh, squirrely. And obviously, any currency that has a dollar in it as the base currency, dollar CAD, dollar Swissy, dollar yen, typically goes with it. However, the dollar yen, the yen is a very big uh, currency. So if you don't have a yen cross, yen index, you're also going to need to find one of those and uh, be able to watch it. You don't have to look at it all day long. You just have to know what they're doing today. All right. So um, there you go. All right. So I'm over here in the dollar index and you can see the dollar is going sideways. OK, well, what does that mean? That means that the big boys are basically quiet. They're not doing anything. They're not going really up. They're not going down. What they're doing is keeping a big range in play. All right. Like that. So now you can see the range. Let me take this off here and there we go. There we go. All right. So you can see they're just ranging side by side. OK, now what will that mean? That will mean most of the markets will be doing the same thing because 88 percent of the um, um, market is affected by the dollar index. All right. So once you have that information, OK, so we look down here and we go and check on our MACD. Now, MACD is the only indicator that has the ability to forecast any type of future. All other indicators are lagging. Right. What does lagging mean? They never tell you what the currency is going to do. They only tell you what the currency has done. Right now. A little bit harder work and you can figure that out for yourself and don't need an indicator. And in fact, 
indicators that are normally used by traders, slow stochastic, RVIs, RSI, those kind of things are proven to only be right 50% of the time. All right. Well, what does that mean? That means that 50% of the time, the information you are relying on is not real. All right. And what happens? Traders rely on that information. They respect the information. They execute based on that information and they have stacked the deck 50% against them. All right. So don't ever become an indicator junkie. All right. So the big boys also show you when they put the money in. Let me just come back here a little bit on this dollar index. OK, so you can see on our charts, the money came in here. The money came in here. The money came in here all in a short. All right. Here is a pullback that was done very, very quickly to, to get it done as quickly as possible so they could go up. These are the differences that uh, traders have to keep track of in the charts. All right. So we're going to go over here and uh, you can see right now that the, the MACD is trying to push up. You've got the moving average out into the open, which means they are trying to transition from the sell to the buy. All right. Now, bears have still got control, as you can see on our charts. Now, you can't see that on um, uh, regular charts, but ours are painted when there's enough momentum of one sort in there. Bulls, bears. OK, that's what it does. All right. All right, so we're going to go with the dollar positive at this point, although it's really just going sideways. So I'm just going to pick a currency. Uh, let's go to the pound. Everybody likes to trade the pound. And I'm going to take everything off this currency and I'm going to start from scratch. OK, now, why do I want to do this? OK, I want to do this because I want to know what the most current information is where the top is, where the bottom is, and where I am inside the move. So how do I do that? I start on a day chart. And by the way, this is the only time I will be coming to a day chart. I will never be coming to a day chart again until there's nothing on this chart. And the reason for that is the information I need uh, on a day chart is inside the candle if I'm going to trade intraday. So all I'm looking for here is where is the top and where is the bottom, all right? So you can see I've got a top right here, right there. And um, uh, what I have to do is prove why did they stop there? So I'm going in the past and what I'm looking for is support, 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 support. OK, that's a lot of information there. And that tells me previous support is going to be resistance here. So now I understand why they stopped here, all right? Now, I've got to find my bottom. Well, if previous support was resistance, what would be support over here? It would be resistance in the past, which is support in the future. So I'm going over to this resistance right here. And what I'm looking for is, are they using it? They used it there. They used it there. They used it there. All right. Not too bad. Uh, I would like a few more, but it's still OK. It does prove that. All right. So now here's what I have. I have the playing field. Think of it as this, all right? This is like European uh, football, American soccer, whatever it has to be. There's a goal up here, and once you attack, you hit that goal, the ball reverts uh, out, and now the other team gets a chance to take it to their goal, all right? Make it as simple as you possibly can, all right? All right. Now, here's what I know about this right now. There has not been any pullback to start a channel to the downside, all right? So one of the things I got to be aware of is that I have had not had this move up here to set the channel so that we can uh, uh, put the uh, the uh, down move in play. That's the job of the big boys. The tier one bankers will create that. Their job is to create a structure that everybody knows. Once the structure is complete, then it's a matter of working your way through the charts and finding out where the follow through will come through. All right. So the big boys, the tier one bankers are, you know, 10 or 15 of those, and they control about 80 percent of the market. 80 percent of everything you see is just controlled by 15 bankers. All right. So who makes the moves to accomplish this agenda? The follow through. That's the interbank market, which has got a th over a thousand bankers, not counting hedge funds and sovereigns. And they're the ones who come in and take the agenda that the big boys have made, the market makers, 
and they take it to target, all right? So back on this move here, the big boy, uh, he, uh, he closed and reversed here to set it up, closed and reversed here, closed and reversed here, closed and reversed here, and closed and reversed here. Now, who took it there? The follow through took it, all right? So there you go. All right, so now I'm done with the day chart. And I will not come back here again until I have no lines on the chart. I have the bottom and I have the top. I don't need any more information from here. Next stop down is the, is the 240. Now, uh, this is called top down analysis, by the way. All right. So, you know, we get down to the 240 and we say, oh, we have had some pullbacks. We have had some pullbacks. And in fact, down here in the 240, we can put a channel on here and we can see if that's it. And what it has to do, it has to prove that they know the heart line. All right. Now, this is a problem on most charts because your channel key or your trend key does not have a heart line. All right. Unless you can prove that they know where that heart line is, you have no idea if this line down here, the outer line, is correct. All right. So we got a couple of shots here. There's support and resistance. Okay. You can look up support and resistance. If you don't know it, I got a video on it. You can just look it up. All right, I'm going to move this from this support right here as as I get on it here and I'm going to move it up to this support and now you see how it proves the heart line perfectly. Did you see that? All right, went from here, it only had one touch. Now, do they know that heart line? They know exactly where that heart line is. That means I can count on this outer line down here, all right? So now, what do I know? I know that I'm, I've already come off the top and I have a channel already built to the downside. That's what I know. All right. Now from here, I need to know, okay, where are the Fibonacci uh, values down in this area that I am attempting to, to move into? All right. Okay. So I'm now looking for the Fibonacci ratios down here or the Fibonacci levels, which will be apparent that the bankers are using. All right. So I, how do I do that? I'm on a 240. I go back in the past and I'm looking for what most approximates the move that they're currently doing. And I can see this move right here. All right. And I can see that I've got a strong support here. All right. But I also have one here. So which one is it? I don't know. I have to go find it. So I go and take the Fibonacci retracement key, click from the swing high to the swing low. Why would I do that? Because I'm going down and I stop. And when I stop, they have got to prove to me without a shadow of a doubt that they know where these lines are. You see that? Do they know these lines? Do they know these lines? You see, they know these lines. Back here, they knew this line, All right? They knew this line, see? That information tells me this is what they're going to use to the downside. So the next one is here and the next one is here. All right. So now I've got some interim targets to the downside. I don't know if they're a, the target, but I know they are a target. All right. All right. So now I'm basically done in the 240 world and I go down in the 60 world, 60 minute world. Now, before I go to the 60, let me explain something. Big boys trade the 240 inside the day chart intraday trading. I'm not talking about swing traders or position traders, intraday traders. All right. They trade the 240 chart and they enter and exit on a 60. All right. So in order for us to get a, a handle on the big boys, we have got to know what the big boys are doing on the 60 minute chart. And we live in the 60 minute world. So we go down here. All right. Now we can see this, this nice channel here. We can also see some more information. We have an A, B, C, which is a continuation pattern and a close and reverse, which means the bankers got out of their buy and immediately into the cell. And you can see the bears have had control over it. MACD has already turned to the downside. Now on your charts, uh, this T3 here, all right, that's a little blue line. It's a type of moving average. If we get a T3 break and a MACD uh, break roughly at the same time, one or two candles apart, from then on, we know that this currency is going in the direction that it broke 82% of the time. All right. Now that's better than you can trade. So you don't fight it. All right. You want to stack the deck where you don't have to be the greatest trader on the planet and where you can simply, simply follow the big boys and what they're doing. All right. So 
We've got quite a bit of information here. All right. Now we can see here that there's a possibility that they are building a flag pattern for the continuation of the downside. Now, if you know anything about flags, there's a video on it here. However, you came into the flag is how you're coming out of the flag. All right. So that's a target. How do I measure that? I take the Fibonacci extension. I go from the swing high down to the bottom of this um, uh, flag back up to this where it is right now, which is where they're showing that this is where they're going to stop. All right. Maybe a little higher. And the 1000 is the target for the flag. Why is that? Because this will then equal this and bankers like things equal, right? So the target for the flag is right there. So I got one target right here and uh, you can see they're expect they're, they are respecting this fib right here, but the next fib is just below that 1000 right there. All right. See that? All right. Now, if I was trending, which rarely happens in the Forex, I would also need to find support and resistance. Okay. Now we're not trending. Uh, it's just a channel, but if we were trending, okay, up there in a big, we don't remember, we don't have that big two wave yet. So it's not trending. It's just doing a channel. All right. Uh, so we would uh, have to find support and resistance. So you'd want to do that in a trend, but I don't want to complicate this video and add that to it. All right. Cause most of the time you don't need that information. Now it is important to understand that the big boys, um, they have very little on their chart. What they do is they trade price action and price action does not use indicators. It doesn't use anything at all except for price action. All right. So I want to show you a chart that is done by my friend, Greg Michalowski and, uh, Greg and I traveled together for three years. He was a bank trader for 12 years for that in, uh, in Europe and actually London. And, um, I want to, uh, pull up a chart that he has so you can see the difference. So here's a bank traders charts. What do they have on it? A moving average, a moving average, a set of bibs. That's it. Down here, he has slope support to find the breakout. All right. So that's it. Well, well where's the Hachi Hichi Hachi Maka Maka Muko? They don't use it. Where's the uh, MACD? They don't use it. What about an RBI? They don't use it. What about a slow stochastic? They don't use it. They use price action and support and resistance. Fibonacci values are support and resistance. Slope support shows you there is re uh, support here. Breaking that support is significant. However, as he's showing here, there's one more line because there's another support to be broken. Now what traders do at the bank level is they will lean on these lines. In other words, <clears throat> a bank trader will be sitting here in on the upper side of this uh, slope support, all right? Should the market move down in this area and they hit sell stops, then he will join them with sell stops in this area. All right. That's what will happen. And it's, it's as simple as that folks. That's all they do is find those levels and trade to those levels. All right. So what we're trying to do is at the retail level, find those levels. All right. And then we're trying to have an edge, something that helps us, uh, give us a little more confidence than, uh, than we, than normal. And the reason for that is the bankers essentially have unlimited funds. You and I have limited funds, so we can only risk no more than 2% of our account at any given time on it, on, on the market. All right. So because we have to deal with 2%, it's even more critical that we know where their lines are so that we can establish risk for reward, which we'll show you in just a minute. All right? Now we also have another tool here, which I'm going to go back up to the 240 here. Now you won't have this tool, uh, but it, it's pretty cool. Uh, we go up here to the top and we have, it's called an HSI. And what it does is it measures the waves. All right based on the Fibonacci sequence. And you can see they know where the lines are. They know right where the lines are. They know where this line is. They know where this line is. So we now know that they know where this line is. So now what do we got? Well, we have a lot of targets. We got the 1000 target from the flag right there. We have a 1.618 uh, Fibonacci extension. We have an S6, which is the wave targets down there. All right. So we've got a lot of targets, but where is the target for today? And that is based on the ATR. Right? Now, anybody can put an ATR on your charts, uh, but if you do so, you're in charge of figuring out the information. All right. So we created a widget so we didn't have to do all that. And it gathers that information every day. So in, in the Forex, we used a 14 day 
average as the target for today, all right? And that means that, uh, you know, then when we get today done, they'll drop a day off and add today's to it, and it changes its values. Not very, very much, but, you know, it could be significant, but normally it's two, three, four pips, all right? So I'm working on the do on the pound dollar, and I know that right now it has 134 pip ATR. That's day in and day out, all right? But its average is 152, all right? So uh, it actually has the ability to go almost 20 pips further on any given day. So that would be important if we find a target here, but we find one 20 pips away, we know that the average says they may go ahead and do that, all right? So all we got to do here is go back to the 60 minute chart, all right? We go to the 60 minute chart and we find that target, all right? So how does that done? Well, the ATR changes every day at the New York fix, which is five o'clock. Also, by the way, so do pivot points, all right? So as a trader, you have to know where five o'clock New York time is in whatever time zone you live in, all right? Now, I live in central time in the United States, so mine is the 1600 candle. If I lived in New York, it would be the 1700 candle, all right? And it's GMT for those of you across the pond. So I simply find the five o'clock candle from yesterday. Let me pull this up and say always on top. All right. And I find the five o'clock candle from yesterday. And where are you? It's 1600. That's 2200. 1600 right there on that red candle right there. So I take the open, which in this case would be the top of the body. And I go down for 134 pips. One, three, four. All right. Now, <clears throat> as we can see, all right, get rid of this. All right, today's target, not the overall target, which is the S6, but today's target is going to be in this area right in here. That's the 1,000 for the flag and the ATR from yesterday on that candle right there. All right, now I can make a risk for reward decision. All right, so I'm up here at the top of the of the of the the starting of the flag right here. If this makes a turn here, all right. This would be the opportunity. Let me draw it here. This would be the opportunity, and we would hold to the 1,000. We'd actually hold all the way down to the 1,900, right? Because there are option contracts sitting on those even numbers, all right? So we can now see that we have an opportunity, and that opportunity has to be a minimum of 55 pips or more, or you cannot make a trade, all right? Our first trade is going to be here, right here, off the top, all right? Now, uh, we only trade one third of our lots in our first trade, which means we have to find a place for the other two thirds. And that's where the other two thirds comes in. We call this a snowman, all right? And uh, you can see this is the head and this is the body, all right? So one third of trade one is one third of our lots. Trade two is always two thirds of our lots. And we always put the two, two thirds of our lots in play first. So we find the place where we can break where, where it, the two thirds could go in. Below this support right here is where they could come in, all right? We always want it in the biggest area because we're gonna risk the most money here. Well, why don't you risk it up here? Because if I get this wrong and it goes this way, I'm gonna lose on only one third of my lots. But if I get it right, one third of the risk on trade two is taken away. So I'm trading as riskless as I possibly can, all right? So the target would be overall 1900. All right, so I would be trading down here, trade one, right? Now you can see there are two T30s here. Now your charts don't have T30s, ours do, all right? It's based on the Fibonacci sequence. Let me show you the Fibonacci sequence. All right, so this is the Fibonacci sequence, all right? 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, all right? These are the banker's numbers. They follow the map. You have to follow the map. At 55 pips, they can trade. Why? Because there's no re reward for the risk at lower than that at their level. But there is for us, because the 34 down here is uh, is uh, enough for us to make money on a one-third lot or something like that, right? So we never trade unless there's 55 pips because the bankers aren't allowed to make a trade. So if there's no bankers here and there's not 55 pips, you're there trying to push it 
thinking you're going to make a trade and it's not going to go anywhere because the bankers are not here, right? Why is it the average low ATR currency does about 89, about 90 pips a day? Because that's the Fibonacci sequence. How about the other ones? About 150 pips a day. That's because a 144 is the Fibonacci sequence. What about those big monsters of pound New Zealand, pound Aussie? They do about 230 to 250 pips a day. See? Why? Because they use the numbers. You got to use the numbers. All right? So, how do we do this? All right. So the first thing is we cannot make a trade. No matter what your trade setup is, you cannot make a trade unless you have risk for reward. All right. So where is my risk? We go down to the 10 minute chart because you and I are trading off a 10 minute chart. All right. Now, if this turns here to the downside, let me make it a little smaller. Here we go. If this turns to the downside, my last resistance is here. So my technical stop would be five to seven pips above that on an odd number of three or a seven. So you can see this is 2050. So my actual technical stop would be 1.2053. All right. But because I am only risking one third of my lots here, all right, and I have the ability to risk two thirds of my lot, I can make this trade, this risk, uh, the stop three times higher. All right. So the reality is that this would be my risk right here. And but my actual stop would go three times higher than that and would go up here like in this area right here 2103 as you can see that so trade one has this all right now my actual risk is this right here for this all right which is all the way down to here and a little lower all right so this is my actual risk can i do this my re real risk is here that's my reward as you can see it's a one four five all right, so you're going to risk one, one lot to make five lots if the trade goes as you want it to. That's a great risk to reward um, situation. You never make a trade because you have a trade setup. You make, a, you make a trade because the trade setup has risk for reward that makes sense. All right. So as we come down now, uh, as a beginning trader, you would be risking this right here for this to be trade one and this would be trade two. All right. Now, if you're a more advanced trader, this would be the risk. This would be trade one. This would be trade two down to that T30 right there. And trade three would be here all the way to the 1000. So you can see if this goes all the way to target and you're going to make, you know, 110 pips there. The next one makes uh, 75 pips. The next one makes 55 pips. The next one makes 30 pips. You add them up. You now are making 200 pips per trade. The average retail trader trades for only five to eight pips. When I was with FXDD, they told me that that's what the average retail trader trades for. Five to eight pips. All right. They risk 30, 35, 40 pips to make five to eight. Listen, folks, that's a recipe for disaster. All right. Your losses will always overcome your wins. All right. You have to trade at 90 percent. Correct for the rest of your trading career to trade that way. Oh yes, you made a winning trade. Oh yes, I am a winner today. Yep, you're a winner. You won the battle, but you just lost the war, All right? So this is how you figure it out, folks. And now you now have a great risk and reward trade. You're going to be able to press your winners without exception. That's the key to being successful in the Forex is the pressing your winners without exception. You have these interim targets, which now become the places that you move your stop, move your stop, move your stop. And when you get next to the target, which is the one of these two right here, your stop is no more if you're eight pips away from the target. You're no no more than eight pips away on all these lots up here are no more than eight pips. All right. Why would I do that? Because I'm willing to risk eight pips here in case the currency blows through and goes down to that next target. Are you willing to risk it? If the answer is yes, you leave them on. Well, the answer should always be yes, because you're trying to maximize the opportunity to the downside. So. There are a couple of things that we also use on our charts, which you won't have on yours. OK, so we have a great MACD with our special setting. All right. And the T3. All right. And uh, then we have these charts right here, which are Heikinashi charts. All right. Now, Heikinashi charts are totally different. We call them the three musketeers because the three musketeers have the same all for one and one for all. And so if these three charts are all saying the same thing, that's what the currency is trying to do. So what is it trying to do? In the 240 world, bankers are trading, they are sellers. In the 60-minute uh, world, 
bankers are selling. So they're selling today. Yeah, but the candles are going up. They're going up for a purpose to go down. All right, what do these say? We're, well, we basically flattened out here, but the bears had it, bears got 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 it, okay? So these three charts down here on our same chart, all right, they tell us where the order flow is coming in and who's in control of that currency. So we look again and we can see this very clearly that the bears got it, the order flows to the downside. The bears got it, order flows to the downside. Bears got it, order flow is to the downside. All right, now we have an oscillator over here, so we're not against oscillators, which as long as you never trade them. Remember, they're lagging. They only tell you what the big boys have done in that strata. In the 240 world, they've been coming down. There it is. I can see that right there. All right. In the six in the 30 minute world, however, they're going up. I can see that. And in the five minute world, they have been going up. But as you see, they're curling to go down. Now, this is a very important information. Why? Because I might want this trade at the top of the flag. Where am I at the top of the flag with this oscillator turning over? It's not going to tell me the future. It tells me what is it doing now? It is trying to turn over right there. So now I know that my trade may be right around the corner, right? So in conclusion, Proact Traders charts can give you the special optics to see what retail traders will never see in MT4 and TradingView. We know because we created these charts for ourselves and a handful of friends and partners 20 years ago. But since then, thousands have accessed our charts and have taken their trading to another level. Now that you've seen what they can do, Maybe you'd like to take them for a test drive. So I'm going to offer you 10 days to evaluate them. And I'll even give you two weeks access to our live trading room during the New York morning session to see how we use them. And then you decide what that value is to you. Our traders capture hundreds of pips often in a single day because their trades ride on the momentum created when the big boys move the market. What could that mean to you? Like us and subscribe. Click to know more. Hope to see you in the live room.